Hi, this is Carol with MetalLife.com. I am here at the Metal Life Store once again at the House of Blues in Los Angeles. I'm here with James and Sammy of Goat Boy. How are you guys doing today? Good, all right. Good? You guys made it down safe? It's really good? Oh, yeah. How are you guys feeling about tonight's tour? Uh, pretty good. Should be fun. LA is always something interesting. So. How are you feeling opening for Behemoth and going like after 1349? I mean, you guys are in a full, full-fledged black metal lineup. How does that feel? Feels good. I mean, but I think we separate ourselves from that whole thing. I mean, we, I we definitely have a black metal influence on our sound, but I wouldn't consider us completely total black metal. Absolutely. So I think, you know, we have our space in between 1349 and Behemoth where, you know, it's a non-stop onslaught between those two. And we come in there and do our little rock and roll show, I guess you can say. Absolutely. Variety is the spice of life. You guys are situated in New Orleans. I wanted to ask you a little bit about what kind of influences from that town and from that province kind of seeps way into your metal music because it is a very, very diverse community in the way of themes of like voodoo and things like that or even like the jazz community, it's obviously like a huge jazz community. Does any of that kind of seep in to your, to your heavy metal music? Well, I think it's more of the surroundings, uh -huh. more than the actual music scene that's there. It's a very, very dark place. <laughs> There's a lot of really bad shit going on in that city. And I think that uh, that has definitely influenced us. Because you know, sometimes we get involved in some of those bad things that happen there. So let's not elaborate on that. Yeah, are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I've heard this like crazy like haunted mausoleums and stuff there. I think it's yeah, there's a lot of supernatural activity down there for sure. Yeah. There's something in the soil there, or something that just goes to survive there. It's Right. What, what about the jazz influence down there? Does that influence any of any of your guys' solos or anything that you like percussive wise that you choose to experiment with? We are solely a metal band. It's all we do. We are only influenced by metal. That's very interesting. Do you guys are you guys not really listening to a lot of non-metal music? Like, does it get you really into it if, if you only listen to metal music? Yes. Wow. I'm a metalhead. That's all I listen to. Wow. What about you, James? Um, mostly metal. I listen to some, you know, older southern rock and other stuff like that. But that's just if I'm working in the garage or whatever. What band would you want to see for your appointment? I would like to see a reunited Hellhammer. Oh, man. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? <laughs> yeah, that would be a good one. That's a good one. I'll, I'll go with that. That's a tough, that's a tough, that's a tough call. Original lineup, though. A lot of bands are starting to release vinyl. Vinyl is very popular. Are you guys going to be doing that with the, with the new release? Yeah, we've yes. always we've always yeah. tried to do that since our first album was released on vinyl. So whatever release, we try to really push to get that going. We're fans of that as well. Right. Yeah, I've loved the Blood of the Master vinyl. I definitely have that also one. Also, like mentioned the the Haunted Curse and Carving vinyls. Yeah, every, yeah, pretty much everything's released on vinyl that we put out. Now. As of this Fine, tour, yeah. we have vinyls for those albums, which they weren't playing before. So. Great, absolutely. And just out of curiosity, are you guys able to play vinyls on the tour bus? Is that something that you could actually get away with? Uh, we don't really have a tour bus, we have a van. Oh, <laughs> we got a turntable, well that's even no. easier. It's like nice and, <laughs> I, nice and portable and compact, you I, just I push into a little corner. I don't think a turntable would last very long. <laughs> it's tight quarters. Yeah. Right, okay. Do you all have good vinyl collections? I have a small one. Okay. Out of your vinyl CD collection, if we were to rate your collection, what are your top three favorite artists in your collection? My prized possession, as far as that goes, I have a Beharit Dawn of Satan's Millennium Picture 7 inch. Wow. And that's uh, <laughs> very, it's very, very hard to find that. Where did you snag that? Uh, a friend of mine bought it for me for my birthday. Wow. So. I said, that's a, that's a keeper friend right there. Oh, yeah, there. yeah, definitely. <laughs> what about you? Um, uh, what about the new one that you got yesterday? Oh man, <laughs> I I, uh, I have an interesting vinyl collection. I have a lot of like soundtracks and just weird shit that I find at record stores on the road, uh, honestly. Okay. And um, I don't know, I've got a bunch of old Priest and Motorhead, you know, that I inherited from my dad, basically. You know what I'm talking about? But uh, top three, I, I don't know. Probably. Give me this prize one. 
you got Actually, one. Actually, you know what? My prize. The Deliverance one. For I, I just got the Deliverance soundtrack, and I have an import pressing of the Mad Max soundtrack on vinyl. What? Where do yeah. you guys get this stuff? I found it. I found it <laughs> at some record store, you know, somewhere. I, mean, I couldn't even tell you. Do you guys have so so you go around? I mean, on your off time, it sounds like you guys go around trying to dig. Well, for you know, vinyl say there's like a that. record store across the street. I mean, you've got nothing yeah, to not do. Many you around go here over either, there, yeah. and, you know, go check out what they have. You never know what you find in there. Seriously, what's your? I mean, I know you guys have toured the U.S. enough. Is there a place in like middle of nowhere, Nebraska, that you're just like, oh man, this this store we got to hit it every time. It's a hidden treasure. There's a bunch of them like that. It's a place in uh, the Montana or Wyoming or something. <laughs> the the vent they got the venue played a show. Oh, there. where was that? That one oh. venue at that one show. It was a Toledo. It was a Toledo. The one with the generator. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, the power. We. I forget the name of it. Yeah, I don't, me too. But a funny story, which you'll find interesting. We had an off day from the tour. And we wanted to do a show. So, well, no, actually, the show was canceled. The show was canceled. Okay. So, we had like two or three days to try and book a last minute show. Okay. So, a guy got a hold of us and said, Hey, I've got a, uh, I've got a record store and we'll do a show there. I've been doing shows there. People come in and whatever. So, we show up. It's this tiny little store. He moved his racks to the side or whatever. And a woman hit the power pole on the block with her, with her vehicle and knocked it down and took out the power for the whole block. Oh no! Well, obviously you can't play like without amps, electricity. You know, without <laughs> electricity. Go to our acoustic set. <laughs> so the guy, I, I went with the guy to Home Depot and we rented a generator and played. The show through a fucking generator. Oh my god, and it worked and people just were fine. Going, people were going crazy. Yeah, it was That's insane. Right. It was insane. Was that recent or was, was that like, just that like was, all back in my days? Sort of that was March of um, 2012. Wow, so No, was recent. that when Book the Master was on? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it was March of 2012. Is that the last technical difficulty? Is that like the worst kind of technical difficulty you guys ever That was pretty uh, bad. That was pretty, that that was was pretty, pretty bad. bad. Yeah. But it we worked. had uh, <laughs> the fire sprinklers go off at a show a long time ago. It cleared out the whole venue. Oh, did that kill your equipment? No, no luckily, no. no we got out. it out. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, so God. that was that was pretty. Uh, that was a bad That was a, a disaster, basically. Wow. Other than that, I can't really. Yeah, it was only really two really terrible ones. Yeah, nothing will go wrong tonight. We look forward <laughs> to this tour too much to let anything go wrong. Thank you guys so much for meeting up with MetalLife.com. Thank you. Really appreciate you being here. Cannot wait for the show. Stay tuned on MetalLife.com.